All right, so I'm currently being lit with the uh, light from an iPhone just on next to the camera, and it's exposed fairly good. So this is the uh, the Nanolux Evoke 1200, except the Nanolux Evoke 1200 is 180 meters away. <laughs> what? How's it going guys? My name is Andrew Murphy from Down Under in Gold Coast, Australia. So I recently purchased the Nanlux Evoke 1200 for two reasons. I needed an, I guess, insanely bright light for my productions and also for some gaffing shoots that I was like working on as well. I needed something a little bit more powerful than my current most powerful light, which is the Forza 300B. And the Forza 300B is absolutely amazing. It is one of my favorite lights, but when you're trying to light up like a big space or do a wide interior shot, or even like some exterior stuff, it just doesn't have enough power. So I've had the Evoke now for a few months and I've been able to test it out in a few different like commercials. And honestly, like I am just blown away by how much light 1200 watts actually is and like the different ways that you can use it or the different ways that you can shoot when you have a lot of power. So first up, some specs of the Nanolux Evoke 1200. So it is a 1200 watt daylight balance COB style light. It outputs flicker-free controllable light and apparently it's comparable to a 2500 watt HMI Fresnel light. It has a CRI of 96, a TLCI of 97. It's a super solid design as well and it's actually IP54 rated, which means that you can use it in the rain. Super cool. And has some like really, I guess, well thought out features, which I'll we'll actually touch on a little bit later. Now, firstly, let's just talk about the design and the size, because I guess that's going to be like the biggest thing that's going to be new to people that are coming from, say, like the Forza range. So compared to a Forza 300B, which is a very common light, it is much bigger when you put them side by side. But if you actually look at it by itself, um, I mean, for me, after shooting with it for a few months, I actually see this as quite a small light, considering the amount of output that it can actually put out. Now, majority of the design is either empty or it's just a heat sink, just because like the sheer amount of heat that this produces when you're actually at 100% power. And we have this massive fan inside to push all the heat out and keep it nice and cool. But this also means that it's not actually that heavy in comparison to say like an old HMI light. So by itself, the uh, Nanlux Evoke 1200 head, this weighs just over seven kilos. So it's definitely not light, but it's definitely not like extremely heavy considering how big it is. And again, the output of light that it can actually put out. The interface on the back is extremely simple to operate. And if you've used basically any Nanlite products before, or really, I guess, any lights at all, then it's gonna be really simple to use. Uh, it has the usual like dial for dimming and then a second dial for controlling, like getting through the menus and stuff. And also press in as well to dim to zero and also like select stuff in the menus. And what is cool is that the Evoke actually gives us 0.1% dimming control. So obviously 1200 watts is a lot of power and sometimes 1% can just be way too much light. So being able to break that down into, I guess, like 10 different increments makes this really, really handy just for getting those fine adjustments. Now, if you want to learn all the technical specs and the color accuracy information and all that kind of stuff, uh, then Andrew Locke from Gaffer and Gear actually did a super detailed breakdown of all the technical information of the Nanlux Evoke 1200, and I highly recommend checking it out. I'll leave it linked up here and also down in the description so you can check it out. It is quite long, I think it's like half an hour, 40 minutes, but he literally goes through everything. He tests all the different modifiers, tests all the different like Fresnels and softbox and stuff, and it's like really, really good. Now the Evoke 1200 does not have a standard Bowens mount on it. It has what is called an NLM mount, which I'm assuming stands for Nanlux mount. And I believe that is for two reasons. So number one is that a standard Bowens mount is not like that big if you look at the COB chip on this. So I guess trying to fit a standard Bowens mount over this big chip probably wouldn't work that well. But also I think as well the reason they've done it is that this is a 1200 watt light. This is like, I guess, the base range of COB light that Nanlux is producing. So hopefully they're gonna make a, you know, two and a half K, five K, potentially like a 10 K or whatever in the future. I don't know where stuff's going, but if they limit themselves to a Bowens mount, then all the accessories that they make for this then won't work for any light they make in the future. And that is one of the biggest things that I hate when like brands come out with new, I guess, like products or new versions, when they change something, you have to buy all new accessories. This gets so annoying. The Evoke 1200 comes with a 45 degree reflector dish, um, and it's this is like so solid. Like compared to just a normal reflector dish, this, this, man, it just like, it just blew my mind the quality of this. And also just like how well it focuses the light. Like this is basically like no light loss. It's just absolutely bloody perfect. And you can also get two other reflectors as well. So the first one is the 60 degree, and it comes in this little 
cute little baggie here. So this one is this little one here. This is the 60 degree compared to the 45 degree. So the, the, the degree, I guess, d determines how wide the beam is. So 45 degree would be like, that's 90 degree. 45 degrees would be this. 60 degrees would be a little bit wider. And then we have the big girl. This is the 26 degree one. This thing is wild. I did not expect this to be so freaking big. Maybe I'm a gangster too. What's good about this is that if you don't want to buy the Fresnel, but you still want to be able to control the light uh, in terms of like the width and stuff, you can get these. So this is the 26 degree one compared to the 45 degree and compared to the 60 degree. So it is bloody huge. And if I actually chuck this on the Evoke, like you can see just how big this reflector dish is. But also... Again, super nice quality, like it, it just controls the light so good. But again, look how big that is, like. <laughs> now the other modifier I have is a 150 centimeter Octabox. And this thing is bloody huge and it produces insanely soft light because it is so big. Uh, but you still get a ton of output out of it as well. And I actually end up uh, using it on a recent commercial, but without the diffusion, uh, because the light coming out of it, we just needed like, max output we couldn't lose any light uh, but just using the, the actual uh, I guess like octobox without any diffusion still managed to kind of shade the light and it still made it quite soft I was really impressed by how well it how good it looked considering it was like a hard source light but if you do want the softest light possible then obviously using diffusion is the best way to go and it comes with two types of diffusion and a grid as well so one is like a just a general full diffusion and one is a grid cloth which doesn't uh, cut down as much light uh, and then obviously we've got the grid as well so if you want to kind of like focus the light and just not have it spilling everywhere you can throw a grid on as well now the other accessory that you can get for the nanlux evoke 1200 is the fl35 fresnel lens now if you thought the evoke was big you have another thing coming so this thing is bloody massive and it's so heavy so this thing by itself weighs nine kilos uh, and once you have the light on stuff, it's just really heavy. But I love, uh, the, I guess, the control you have over the light with Fresnel. So I absolutely am a sucker for Fresnels. As soon as I got one for my Forza 300B, I just use it so, so much. Especially outdoors when you need to, I guess, like amplify or intensify your light. Uh, you can use like a 300B outdoors with a Fresnel lens and you can overpower the sun. It just means that it's like quite spotted and you can only use it in a, like a very small area but it's just one of the benefits of using a Fresnel lens. So the FL35 Fresnel lens will allow you to go from a spot beam, which is 11 degrees, all the way to oh, uh, 45 degrees. And we just have this little ring on the outside, which allows you to control, uh, I guess, the spot and flood of the light. Uh, and the light goes on here. So the light actually moves in and out, rather than the Fresnel moving out and in, which is a good and a bad thing. So when it's fully extended like this, then obviously the light is balanced with this and stuff, but when it goes all the way in and the light is on, because the actual like pickup point is down here in the kind of like towards the back of the Fresnel, it does make it very front heavy. And also because the pickup points on the bottom of the Fresnel, it makes it very top heavy as well. And I guess this can be a little bit dangerous if you aren't expecting it to be so front heavy or so top heavy, it could kind of like, you know, yank you forward or potentially like uh, pull you off. So like a ladder or something, if, if this is up somewhere high. So just something to really keep in mind when you are actually using this. But one of the best things as well about this is that the actual mount on here is the same on the Fresnel and the light. So give me two secs. So this is the actual mount that the light goes on. We have a single adjustable point, oh my God, on this side, uh, which unlocks both of the sides. Uh, and then basically you just slip the light in here. So you don't have to actually have all this assembled. You can have this on the stand and then you can clip your light or your Fresnel in after it's all kind of set up, which is really good because it makes it easier to obviously like, well, I guess less weight to have to carry around because this just adds more to the light or the Fresnel itself. But again, we can clip the light onto here itself or we can take the light off this and then add the Fresnel onto here. So it makes it really adjustable and, and easy to attach stuff without having to add like multiple of these to mount multiple different accessories. And then once you actually slide it in here, you have this little lever here. So when it's red, it means that it is unlocked. And then when you push it up, 
it'll lock into place and then to take it off you just press this little blue button and you can unlock it and take it out again. It's really, really good. Now I guess the main benefit of using say a Fresnel instead of just reflector dishes is that you just have total control anywhere from 11 degrees to 45 degrees and you also get a little bit more output as well. It's not as much as I thought you would get like that you'd like typically get from a normal Fresnel on a normal light. But if you do need say like, I don't know, like 17 degrees of spot, then you can do that on the Fresnel. Whereas with just the reflected dishes, you are stuck to that 60, uh, 45 and 26 degree beam. Now moving to the power supply, and I think you're kind of understanding the theme of this. Everything's just big, everything's just heavy, but this is also IP54 rated as well. So essentially like if you want to use this out in the rain, you can like it's just it's there's nothing not really any kind of weather that's going to stop you and uh the cool thing is that if we come down oh, down this end we can see that the connectors are actually weather sealed so we have uh, rubber seals on here and also the the actual switch as well is sealed the only thing you have to keep in mind is that you have to oh, you have to mount it this way, which typically just sits on the ground like this. You can't obviously mount it this way because the potential of water getting into here is a lot higher if you mount it up like this. And again, continuing that theme, we can see on the head itself, we have a sealed USB port. We have a DMX in, a DMX out, our power cable, and then also a control cable as well. Uh, so again, everything is nice and sealed. So if you have to use it in the rain or you want to use it in the rain, which I actually did on a recent shoot, you don't have to worry about it. Now the power cable, again, everything is just huge. Like just expect everything to be big and you won't be disappointed. This thing is just freaking massive. Again, all sealed, all good. It has the same uh, actual like connectors on both ends. So there's no way of accidentally plugging in the wrong end to the wrong side, uh, but it's only five meters. and Typically that, that, that's a lot of cable, but when all the controls are on the head and also the ballast usually sits on the ground, and because it's 1200 watts, typically you're not gonna have it super close to your talent. You're gonna boom it up or have it somewhere high out of the way. Five meters sometimes isn't really enough, but I have been assured that our Nanlux is working on some longer cables. So if five meters isn't enough for you, you will be able to get some longer options in the future. Now, like I was saying, I actually did recently use this on a commercial shoot where we actually ended up being in the rain or getting rained out. And to be honest, it was just the weirdest feeling putting this or having this light out and it's starting to rain and like not doing anything about it. Like typically the first thing that goes through your mind when you have a light outside and it starts to rain is you just drop everything. You run as fast as you possibly can and you grab that light and you bring it inside because typically lights aren't waterproof. So when I was kind of like standing there seeing it being rained on, like all this, like there was just such a big urge inside me to just pack it down. But I just knew that I didn't have to because it's IP54 rated. And because it is IP54 rated, it means that we were actually able to continue the shoot. So uh, the scenes we used it for were actually like, uh, it was like an interior storm scene and we need to have lightning from outside coming in. And the evoke was perfect for this. So we had the lightning effect built into it. And because it was raining outside, we could just put this outside in the rain, not have to worry about it getting damaged because again, it's made to be out in the rain. Uh, and we paired that with a 60 degree reflector dish and it just works so good. And then for the first scene where we started getting set up but we got rained out, we were using the FL35 Fresnel as well. And we just had a half CTO gel on it to simulate, I guess, like a sunset light. But after two shots, it started bucketing down and we had to pack it down and we had to basically have to just can that scene. We're gonna have to shoot that again in the future. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that if you are a solo filmmaker or you do work, work with a small team, is actually just transporting this light. So I also bought the flight case as well to house all of this, so the Fresnel and the light and, and everything as well. Uh, but in total, I think it weighs nearly like 100 kilograms and it's just not practical if you just like are working by yourself. And since I live on a third story apartment and we don't have an elevator in here, I have to organize someone to help me carry it down to my car every time I want to use it, which is not practical at all. Now I have been told that a soft case for the Evoke is going to be coming out. I'm not sure exactly when that will happen, but that is going to be a much better option if you are like a, I guess a solo filmmaker, because then you can distribute the weight and it makes it much easier to transport. And again, like because the Evoke doesn't come with any sort of case, 
you need something just to keep it safe and just keep it... Like, when you're storing it away, you don't want it to just have, like, stuff laying on top of it and get damaged. But overall, I am just super impressed by the Nanlux Evoke 1200. Just, like, the things that it's allowed me to be able to shoot and just, like, the stuff it's opened up for me is just really cool. But also, it doesn't come in cheap as well. So, for about $3,350, US you get the light fixture, the ballast, the 45-degree reflector, and your cables as well. Then, the Fresnel, the FL35, will set you back an additional 935 US dollars and then on top of that the flight case to house it all is about 875 US dollars. So again definitely not a small investment but it really depends on what you actually want to use it for. Now for me I was struggling for power a bit with my Forza 300B uh, in, especially in large spaces but I knew that a Forza 500 wasn't like that big of a jump from a Forza 300 so the Nanlux Evoke 1200 was obviously like the next logical step for the, I guess, amount of light that I was requiring. Plus the fact that it is IP54 rated just really just solved me because it just allows you to just shoot in way different environments and just in way more situations. As for the reflector dishes, the 45 degree actually comes in the kit, uh, but you can pick up the 26 and 60 degree reflectors in a kit for about 186 US dollars. And I think these are a great option if you want to be able to shape the light similar to what a Fresnel will do, but either you don't have the budget for a nail or you don't like need all that control, you can save a little bit of money there. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at the, uh, the Nanlux Evoke 1200. I'll have a ton of content coming up and also a lot of lighting breakdowns as well using this light as it's going to be basically on most commercials that I actually shoot from now on. So stay tuned for that. But if you do want to find out, oh, I'm going to put this down because it's so heavy. If you do want to find out any more about the Nanlux Evoke 1200, I'll leave some links down below. Otherwise, stay creative and just be.